Hi, this is Roger in Finland and today we're going to explain Sony's PP7, PP8 and PP9 picture profiles, which means S-Log2 and S-Log3. And for the impression ones, right now we're shooting in PP7, the default settings, which are S-Log2 and S-Gamut. And S-Log2 is a picture profile that has less dynamic range than S-Log3 which means that it's a little bit more forgiving to 8-bit cameras, like the CV-1, the A6400, or the A7 III. The good news is that nowadays, with the latest versions of DaVinci Resolve, S-Log2 can also be color graded in ACES. I have some videos explaining how to use color space transforms to color grade S-Log footage with your cameras. That workflow still applies here, but now the news is that what you're watching right now is S-Log2 color graded in ACES. Then we have two picture profiles for S-Log3, PP8 and PP9. The difference is that PP8 we have S-Gamma3.Cine and in PP9 we have S-Gamma3. S-Log3 does have more dynamic range than S-Log2. It means also that it might be a little bit harsher on 8-bit um, Sony cameras. And I would definitely use it if the main goal is to preserve highlights because that's what it's intended for. And it does maybe a little bit better job at that than S-Log2. And even if it's a bit more difficult to recommend for 8-bit cameras, it's definitely usable if you're using a color managed workflow, either using Resolve Color Management, RCM, or ACES. And now for some more details, I introduced in the beginning and for the impatient ones, PP7, PP8, and PP9, and these are the defaults for many of current Sony cameras that hold S-Log2 and S-Log3. You can change the gamma, you can change the log profile, you can change the gamma curve, so you can make them your own. So now I'm talking about the defaults. In PP7, we have S-Log2 with s gamut PP8, S-Log3 with s gamut 3 Cine, in PP9, S-Log3 with s gamut 3 But before going into the venture Resolve and taking a look at how log compresses things, a few of the basics. Because log profiles look like washed out, flat, desaturated image, some people think that they are just that, non-contrasty, desaturated images. And if you try to just add contrast and add saturation to a log image, you'll see that it looks bad. And that's the reason why many people complain that log profiles are difficult to work with, because you're trying to do things manually, and probably you shouldn't. Even if instead of just adjusting the contrast blindly, we go and try to tweak the gamma curve and make a nice S shape, that S shape may or may not be exactly the shape of the gamma curve of the log profile of your camera, so you're always doing some guesswork. So camera manufacturers spend a lot of money and time doing research, developing what is in fact color science, and what they try to do by using a log profile is to cram as much information as possible, both from exposure and color, into the recorded file so that in post, you have the choice to push that footage into possible different directions. By having more information than you will need in the end, it allows you to actually modify it consciously. But even if it's designed to be manipulated afterwards, color grading will be a creative manipulation with a lot of manual work and that's fine, but interpreting log footage shouldn't be a manual creative manipulation because the science that is behind the log footage is implemented in the software that you're using, or likely so, at least in my case, I'm using DaVinci Resolve for color grading and color correction. And in DaVinci Resolve, I have all the tools I need to do interpreting of footage properly. Basically, in a nutshell, use your time to be creative, but if you need to do math-like things, let the computer do it for you. I think that all of this is a bit easier if we hop into DaVinci Resolve, we're going to take a look at S-Log2, we're going to take a look at S-Log3, and what are the potential differences. So now we're in DaVinci Resolve 18.0.3, and as you can see in my timeline, I only have two generators. One is this grayscale, and the other one is this SMPTE. That's going to help me to explain about colors. But now let's focus on the gamma curve. No colors at all, just this gray curve. And also, for the sake of the exercise, let's assume that this is the dynamic range that your camera is capable of recording. What I have here in really big is the scopes and I have the waveform and you can see that it's just a perfectly straight line from zero all black to 124, 123, 1023 all white 
but this is just the gradient. So let's put a color space transform in this node. And let's basically try to get the computer interpret or think or believe that we're gonna use or we're gonna fill this scene and transform it into s log 2 So we're using whatever input we have and transforming it to s gamut, which doesn't quite matter because we don't have any color, and s log 2 And this is what the camera is trying to do. As you can see, it's mostly compressing the highlights, not doing that much more with the mids or the dark areas, other than pushing what I was our black to gray. So this looks flatter than a moment ago. If I go back for a moment, back, this is a lot more contrasty, and this is the log image. So yes, it does look more flat or uh, less contrasty, but maybe that's not it. And now let me prove it. I'm gonna try to not fix this manually and trying to fix this curve and have it as flat as we can, as we said before. If I would just increase the contrast, well, you can see that the line gets somewhere straighter, but definitely not the strain line that we had before. Another way of doing this is of course then playing manually with this, so now I'm gonna try to get my corner to the black place where it was before, and now we have to straighten this up, okay, it got straighter, but now it's doing some weird things there on the top, you can maybe try to fix a little bit, and uh, yeah, this is kind of what it was, now let me disable it all, this is the original image. Now if I enable this node, now this is the S-Log2 transformation, and this is my attempt at going from S-Log2 to the reality or the original image manually. And as you can see, I haven't quite succeeded. And that's the problem of trying to do this manually. Now, if I just take away this node, I add another one, but what we do is let the computer work for us. So we know that this footage that gets into this node is Sony S Gamut, which again, now still doesn't matter, and S Log 2. And now the transformation is complete and the transformation is perfect. And actually, this is something I wouldn't do usually. So if this is my camera image, this is my first transform, what I would usually do is go to RE, Gamut, and RE Log C, which is another transformation, and in the very end, go from that one to whatever the timeline is. And as you see, once again, the transformation is perfect. So we went from Let's disable it all. From the normal image to S-Log2, that's what the camera is doing. This going from S-Log2 to re -Log -C. And the last one goes from re -Log -C to the normal image. The reason for that, by the way, is that it's nicer or easier for me, at least, to really adjust all of these things, the offset, the highlights, and playing with the curves. If I am playing in re -Log -C, so somewhere here in the between than if I do it somewhere there. So that's the main reason. But now we saw this interpretation. Now what happens to s log 2 versus s log 3? Let's take a look. Now we can see this is the s log 2 curve and this is the s log 3 curve. And you can see it's more aggressive and it's also compressing some of the shadows. Once again, if now I would have to do this manually, I wouldn't know how to do it, or I would do it wrongly, so I would do the color space transforms. And let me show you why it's important to transform things properly. So, if I now go from s gamut, which is still doesn't matter, but I would actually do it wrongly and go from s log 2, you can see that the footage is not interpreted correctly, because our input was in s log 3. And this is about the gamma, but what happens with the colors? So let's take a look at this. 
Um, now, instead of looking at the waveform, which looks kind of fun, we're going to take a look at the vector scope. And let's remove the zoom. Colorize is just fine. And what else? Oh, there we are. But as you can see, those colors are the primary colors, the red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. And they are exactly where they are supposed to be. But now let the camera interpret or take a video or a picture of this and transform it from whatever it is, meaning the reality, to s gamut, which now definitely does matter, and s log 2. And you just saw where these things went from, the proper placement exactly in these color chips to whatever. Obviously, the first thing here is that, well, hey, this is desaturated. Can we just make it more saturated? Let's try it. Let's make another node. And in here, let's put the saturation to the max. That did kind of help, but not enough. Does the color boost help a bit? Somewhat. But now see the yellow is here. The blue is actually more saturated than it should. Cyan is definitely not enough saturated and it's going to a different direction. The magenta is really going away. Uh, let's make another note. Can I here use the color warper? And let's take the maybe the blue kind of to where it's supposed to. The uh, not make the magenta, maybe this one. Like the magenta kind of. Sure this is better. The red. Yeah, maybe. How about the yellow? Yeah, but I cannot make it more saturated. So the green, I really have to mess with this. And how about that cyan? Well, if you look at the image, it looks pretty good. Well, closer than before anyway. But see what happens if I just disable this, all of it. That was our reality. And this is my interpretation of the reality after it went through an s transformation. It's not bad but it's not good enough. Let me take this away. Let's make another note and let's let the computer work for us. We know that we were shooting in s mode. We know that we were shooting in s log 2 And the computer knows exactly how to interpret the footage, color correct, the gamma curve is what it's supposed to be, and this is a color accurate transformation, removing all possible guesswork. Now, here, please be creative and change the colors if you want to. And if we would have a face here with some skin tones, make them look good and whatever you need to do. But let the computer do the interpretation. Once again, what are the differences here between SLAG2 and SGAMUT? Um, I'm going to remove this node for a moment. Let's put, first of all, s log 3 in here. And this would be PP8, s gamma 3 cine. And let me show you PP9, s gamma 3. And you can see if I undo and redo and undo and redo that s gamma 3 is a little bit different than s gamma 3 cine. So the color interpretation is different. Now, if we make a perfect transform on this absolutely artificial situation, both will give exactly the same results, but in real life, with colors captured by the camera, the decision between S Gamma 3 and Xamo 3 Cine might make a creative difference. So please try it out and test what works for you. The important thing here is that if I want to interpret now this footage and I know that I was shooting in PP8, in my Sony camera, I will just transform my Sony footage from S gamma 3 Cine, was it so? Yes, because it was PP8 and S log 3. And the final result will be exactly the same than the reality. Or in other words, I would have color corrected a log image, which I still has all the information for you to manipulate without having to do any guesswork on the gamma curves or the color interpretation. Let the computer work for you. 
So with all this said, hopefully we understand a little bit better what is a log profile, what is it, why is it good to use a color manage workflow to interpret the footage and then you can be creative on your own, which what I chose having Sony cameras. If preserving highlights is absolutely your main concern and your main goal, I would go towards S-Log3. If you're shooting with 8-bit cameras like the Sony ZV-1 or the Sony A6400 or the Sony A7 III, then I might tend and lean towards S-Log2, which is a little bit more forgiving and less extreme picture profile. But if you're using S-Log3, you can be successful if you're using a color manage workflow. And just as a test, the rest of the video was shot either in PP7 or PP9, but right now we are in PP8, which is S-Log3 with s 3 Cine. The differences between s 3 and s 3 Cine, I'm sure that they are detectable if you're a professional and you push the footage towards certain direction, but I think that to have a color-corrected normal-looking image, both of them are pretty much the same. As usually, my point is that please test and choose the one that works the best for you. And this video I'm filming with the A7 IV, which at the moment is filming me in 10-bit and 422, which of course gives more room in post and it's pretty nice to work with, but I have been an advocate that with a proper workflow, 8-bit cameras are definitely okay. I have videos about color grading S-Log 8-bit footage with the A6400 and with Sony ZV-1 using either color space transforms or ACs and I get definitely very good results from them. So don't get this encouraged if you don't have a 10-bit camera. Yes, you can still use log footage with your 8-bit camera. It's just that it becomes even more important that you have a color manage workflow so you remove as much guesswork as possible from the work you have to do. So I hope you enjoyed this a bit longer and a bit nerdy video, but hopefully understanding what log profiles are, what the differences are between S-Log2 and S-Log3, when we did take a look at the curves with those grayscales and the actual colors. And if you find it interesting and you like the video, please like and subscribe. And we're going to see you soon for some more content.